The Yankees had one of the best bullpens in baseball last season, leading the league in ERA at 3.43 and still having the nucleus of that strong bullpen together. We've rarely seen concerns about the team's ability to find reliever value on the market or develop guys who seemingly come out of nowhere and become studs, but the team is still interested in adding relievers through free agency if possible. You can truly never have too much pitching, and in today's video, we're breaking down 5 reliever targets for the Yankees on the free agent market at various price points. Hello everybody, I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees, and before we get into today's video, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know of our next upload. We're uploading podcasts daily, and we have content that you guys do not want to miss out on, so make sure you join the Fireside family today and get caught up on all things Yankees related. And with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. Coming in at number 5 is a reunion candidate, and that's Keenan Middleton. The Yankees acquired Middleton at the deadline from the Chicago White Sox, and the 30-year-old right-hander could be one of the most underrated relievers on the market. One of the Yankees' biggest needs this winter is to add arms who can handle left-handed hitters, and Middleton certainly helps the Yankees on that front with his strong changeup and fastball combination. Left-handed batters have had a mere 684 OPS against Middleton in his MLB career, and that was no different in 2023 when he had a 241 OBP and 28.7% strikeout rate against him in 87 plate appearances. Middleton set career highs in strikeouts 64, and the Yankees played a huge role in his second half surge. With the White Sox, Middleton had a respectable 3.96 ERA, but was giving up a lot of home runs and couldn't seem to get right-handed hitters out. They posted an OPP north of 370 against him, so the Yankees took a look at his pitch usage and shifted some things around. The main tweet came from Middleton's usage of his slider and changeup against righties, with the Yankees opting for him to use his slider 45.7% of the time against right-handed hitters, making it his primary pitch in those situations. As a result, they only had a 283 OBP against him with the Yankees. In his time with the Bronx Bombers, Middleton pitched to a 1.88 ERA and a 3.26 dip across 14 and third innings pitched, showing an ability to give the Yankees more than 3 outs as well, which could certainly boost the team's versatility in their pitching staff. Given how well he pitched down the stretch and his excellent stuff, it played really well when the Yankees made the right tweaks and the team could reunite with the hard throwing right hander on a cheap one year contract. If they're able to land Middleton on a one year, $5 million deal, it wouldn't preclude them from making other signings and it would give the Yankees a reliever who throws extremely hard, gets plenty of ground balls, and can get swings and misses as well against any type of hitter. It could be a low cost move with high payoff and with the Yankees need for any pitching at all, the two sides could match up well for a deal. Steer projects Middleton for a 3.98 ERA and a 25% strike rate across 57 innings in his age 30 season, and the Yankees could get the boost they're looking for in their bullpen without breaking the bank by reuniting with Keenan Middleton this winter. Coming in at number 4, we have a swingman who could give the Yankees a versatile arm from the right-handed side that can bolster their rotation and bullpen at the same time. It's unlikely that Jacob Judas would have much hype from the public sphere, but I think the Yankees would be an excellent fit for the right-hander. While he's known in New York for being the pitcher who hit Aaron Judge back in 2018, he settled into the new role with the San Francisco Giants as a bulk reliever who heavily relies on a sweeping slider. This past season, Judas gave San Francisco 86 productive innings as a starter and bulk reliever, pitching to the tune of a 3.87 ERA and striking out 26.2% of batters faced with a 3.74 FIP and he too made mid-season adjustments that boosted his effectiveness. Junis had platoon issues just like Middleton, except for Junis, it was an issue handling left-handed batters instead of right-handed batters, as they pummeled him for a 505 slugging percentage in 2022, and in the first half of this season, lefty slugged 553 against him, which is even more impressive considering he played most of his games at Oracle Park, and San Francisco was just not a place known for high-powered offenses or plenty of home runs, so he was really getting hit hard by left-handed hitters. The addition of a changeup gave him a weapon to left-handed hitters, and down the stretch, he would post a 2.16 ERA and a 21.7% strikeout to walk rate across 29 to 3rd innings pitched before back issues ended his season a bit early in September. Junis has an excellent slider that carries his arsenal with a 129 stuff plus and a 35.1% whiff rate this past season, and he leaned on it 65.7% of the time. And it makes him a unique pitcher considering the fact we rarely see pitchers use sliders as their primary pitch, especially at a 65% usage rate, that's just unheard of. The changeup we talked about earlier does an excellent job of getting swings and misses and soft contact, and his fastball really isn't great, but it's a show pitch. 
That being said, Junos could give the Yankees another option in their bullpen with a strong breaking ball and really good swing and miss stuff, and he's also somebody who could be a starter or opener when needed. The Yankees have had reports come out about a super bullpen, and Junos would certainly give the Yankees a bullpen capable of doing super things, like starting for the Yankees in a pinch, or a guy who could pitch from the 6th inning to the 8th, or also a guy who could open games if need be. Adding a multi-inning relief arm for cheap would be excellent value for the Yankees, and he certainly fills a hole on this roster left behind by Johnny Brito following his trade to the San Diego Padres. Just like Keenan Middleton, I don't anticipate that he would cost a ton on the free agent market, but he helps to fortify the back end of the Yankees bullpen and could also give the Yankees a security blanket when they need to use a bullpen game or a starter fails to get deep into a ball game as well. You're paying for the versatility and effectiveness here, and Jacob Junis is the perfect guy for a swingman role for 2024. Next up on our list is a pricier option, and that's Jordan Hicks, who posted a career best season with a 3.29 ERA across 65 and two third innings pitched. The right hander is known for his electric velocity with a fastball that sat at 100 miles per hour this past season with remarkable movement. If you've seen Hicks pitch before, you know he has dominating velocity that can overpower any hitter, and his ability to throw that kind of filthy stuff has allowed him to be one of the most terrifying relievers in all of baseball. Hicks held hitters to a 58.3% ground ball rate and 5.4% bar rate this past season, as hitters only mustered 4 home runs in 65 games against him on the season as a result of this bowling ball sinker. Batters had a negative 6 degree launch angle against Hicks' sinker this past season, and he generated 16 inches of run at 100.1 miles per hour for 160 stuff plus on the season and he leaned on that pitch heavily at a 64.4% usage rate creating a nightmare for right-handed hitters a nightmare that only got worse with the advent of a sweeping slider to make his arsenal even more dominant Hicks has began throwing an 87 mile per hour sweeper with 12 inches of horizontal break and batters whiffed at the pitch 59.5% of the time against that buzzsaw breaking pitch making it one of the best in baseball Right-handed hitters hit just 234 against him with a 30.5% strikeout rate, but he still held left-handed hitters to an OPS below 700, and he has some pitches he can mix in more against lefties to potentially generate more swings and misses in those situations. Hicks possesses an excellent four-seam fastball that generates 16 inches of carry at 100 miles per hour, and lefties chase the pitch often in their matchups with plenty of whiffs as well. Hicks hasn't found the reliable breaking ball or off-speed pitch for these matchups, but four-seamers could help in this instance for strikeouts. The Yankees would be adding a serious high leverage option to their bullpen who has wicked stuff and could improve in the Bronx. A Tommy John surgery early in his career slowed his development, but he's just 27 years old and could be the perfect addition to Matt Blake's bullpen. As the Yankees continue to build a lab of arms who can throw absolute gas, Jordan Hicks has a ridiculous repertoire that could give the Yankees one of the best bullpens in the sport. Projections love Hicks, as Steamer believes he'll provide a 3.27 ERA across 66 innings pitched, and Fangraph's projects him to receive a 3-year $27 million deal, and look, landing a nasty reliever below $10 million a year would be great value for the Yankees, and he would be a high leverage weapon for the team, not just in 2024, but for the next 3 years as well. It would be more expensive than we've been used to for relievers in recent off-seasons, but adding a young arm who sits at 100 miles per hour would be a worthwhile investment if Matt Blake and Sam Breen think they could get more out of his profile. He spent the entirety of his career before the past trade deadline with the St. Louis Cardinals, not an organization known for their pitching development, so perhaps there's some untapped potential in that rocket arm. Robert Stevenson comes in at number 2 on this list, and he's arguably the best value option on this free agent market for relievers. You could be potentially getting one of the 5 or 6 best relievers in all of baseball, and that's without paying the upper echelon prices on the market to get a pitcher of that caliber. He displayed a brand new cutter with the Rays last season and sported a ridiculous 2.35 ERA with Tampa Bay across 42 outings after being traded from the Pittsburgh Pirates and another fleece job by the Rays front office. He struck out 42.9% of batters face with just a 5.7% walk rate over that time span, sporting a 1.78 skill interactive ERA and proving highly valuable for a playoff bound Rays squad. Stevenson is entering his age 30 season and his pitch mix is one of the finest in all of baseball. While his cutter grades out as an average pitch in terms of stuff plus, it's likely because it's a miscategorized pitch. Stevenson uses his cutter like a slider and it sits at 88.3 miles per hour with essentially 0 inches of horizontal movement and it has plenty of firm drop as well. Stevenson's slider with the Rays was outright ridiculous with a 42.2% whiff rate, 44.1% chase rate, and 151 Woba against on the season as hitters couldn't touch the pitch and when they did, it was often for harmless contact. Despite being his best pitch in terms of stuff plus at 116, Stevenson's four-seamer allowed really loud contact and wasn't a reliable pitch for him, and the splitter was used about 13% of the time with great success as well, 
but again that cutter slash slider it was his best pitch by far it is a pitch you use 60% of the time and he could end up making a lot of money because of this pitch because while Fangraphs projects him for just a two-year $10 million contract this winter I believe he'll end up signing for way more than that especially given the underlying metrics with his run in Tampa Bay a three-year deal of about eight to nine million dollars in AAV would put him in between 24 and 27 million dollars and that could make a lot of sense here which I think is pretty fair given the fact that you have to account for the previous years before 2023 when he wasn't as effective it would be another contract that certainly counts under the quote-unquote paying a reliever category but it doesn't break the bank either and keeps the Yankees in play for other big acquisitions this deal has the opportunity to be a massive steal for any team as Stevenson is just another example of modern pitching development one could argue that he's a one pitch pitcher but that one pitch is as good if not better than any other pitch in the world right now and it's allowed him to be one of the best whiff machines in all of baseball the Yankees are stellar at finding surplus value in the bullpen market, and I believe that Robert Stevenson has the chance to be one of the best deals in this free agent class. Finally, on this list, we have a guy who the Yankees are almost certainly not going to land, but we'll still talk about anyways. The Yankees should probably not sign Josh Hader given his price tag, as we can expect that the five-time All-Star and three-time NL Reliever of the Year winner will demand a nine-figure contract similar to the one signed by Mets superstar closer Edwin Diaz, and the Yankees would be better off adding that nine-figure contract to the rotation or lineup. That being said, he is the best reliever on this market, and he's one of the best relievers in all of baseball, so we're going to talk about him, especially after putting up a 1.28 ERA across 56 and a third innings pitched. He struck out 85 batters and rebounded after a terrible season in 2022, where he had a 5.22 ERA and found himself traded by the Milwaukee Brewers at the All-Star break. In his career, Hader has a 2.50 ERA and 648 strikeouts across 388 into third innings pitched, and he's been the best closer in baseball since debuting back in 2017. This stuff is clearly dominant, and any team will be better with him in their bullpen, but for the Yankees, it's not a matter of whether Hader makes them better or not, he clearly does. The question is if he would make them better enough to justify $20 million a season, and more importantly, if his value to the team will be worth the opportunity cost of signing Josh Hader. This would likely remove you from the Jordan Montgomery sweepstakes and the Yankees would be much better off with a frontline starter than a closer especially given their aforementioned success developing relievers in the past. Current closer Clay Holmes was traded for Hoy Jun Park and since being acquired by the Yankees he actually sports a better ERA, FIP, and war than Josh Hader. It'll be a poor allocation of funds for the New York Yankees but he is still the best reliever on the market so I had to do him due diligence and talk about him on this list. Thank you for sticking through for the entire video. Let us know who you guys would sign for the Yankees bullpen in the comment section below. And make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, get involved with Fireside Yankees. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers, and we're literally right there. So if you guys could press that big red subscribe button, that would be a huge help. We've got daily podcasts. We've got a bunch of different content. You guys can check out some of that other content on our various social media channels. We have a Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And of course, you guys can check out Empire Sports Media for all your favorite New York sports content. I'm Ryan Garcia from Fireside Yankees, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.